Show time. I think we got the show time on there, Carol. <laughs> well, welcome. It is show time. Uh, thanks for Carol for uh, kicking off our uh, new conversation today. Today I have uh, Carol Omar Bihan, and uh, she is a uh, part of my sacred geometry apprenticeship, the eight weeks that I just finished up and she's happily joining me for the next session too. Um, but she has a rich background in sacred geometry and interests, particularly around labyrinths. And uh, she's got quite a journey, you know, following the labyrinth spiral, which connected us together. So we're gonna dive into all that and just see where that trail takes us on our own labyrinth path together today. So Carol, yeah. Uh, welcome to the new conversation and uh, new geometry channel. Just uh, please feel free to share how you're doing today and how you want to get things rolling for us. Okay. Well, it's a pleasure, um, as have been the classes that we uh, were together uh, in the last couple of months. And then prior to that, very grateful for the um, intro course of five weeks at uh, Rogue Conference Center. A little shout out to their wonderful programs. And um, so that was great. So here I am knowing that I, I've been on a journey with sacred geometry and I'll give a little reason and what I know that that is true. Why is that is true? But uh, to be where this part is now and to go on because it it's, gets fairly, um, um, uh, you just need, it's inducing you to go on and, and explore further. So I know there's more to go. But that's the way life is. As a person who in an earlier part of my life was a teacher, um, and even before that as a student, um, I went to a college where it was encouraged the idea of lifelong learning. So um, this continues to be the case. And I, I try certainly for myself, but encouraging that in other people. Yeah. But um, I will, and I tend to go down uh, side routes a lot, George, so you can reel me in anytime. <laughs> it seems as if it's going on. But, um, the um, the thing that brought me, so I, I'll probably go, and I guess I'll say a little shout out for the day itself. I live on the northwest corner of the Catskill Mountains in upstate New York. And so for us, and last but not least, and I didn't wear the moon pendant, we are recording this on a day that's quite really lovely. We'll see what the energy is that comes in. It's Friday the 13th. <laughs> and uh, I, I'm kind of thinking you you don't get spooked by that. But it's the day before a spectacular uh, full lunar eclipse. So mm -hmm. a full moon tomorrow, it'll be in Scorpio. So if you see this anyone years later, you'll think, what? Why is she mentioning that? But there's really an energy in that and the spiral of the seasons and all of that that enters in. So um, my journey early on was around the cycle of the seasons. And then as your own years add up, I knew fairly early, I felt that life was not so much linear as a beautiful spiral. Mm. So it was probably only a matter of time that two things happened that sacred geometry came from. And I'll share a screen here in a minute to show you a little bit more. Mm -hmm. But before the picture comes up, the two things that we'll be looking at with hopefully not a, an uncomfortable uh, jockeying in of the a photo or two um, is that I, um, now, which came first? Oh, the labyrinth. I attended a wonderful conference in Saratoga Springs, New York, and crossing the campus one day, it was devoted to enhancing one's creativity. Mm. Um, in the middle of this beautiful quad with trees and shade and all of that, in the middle of this beautiful August day, there was laid out on the grass in yarn, this spiral. And, or at least as I looked at it, I thought, oh, what's this? And then something clicked in my head and said, oh my gosh, it's a labyrinth. <laughs> and I was so excited. There was no one there at the moment. And literally, and you know, you've had your own magical experiences with sacred geometry, yeah. bringing you into wanting to know more. But when I decided to commit myself to, because it's kind of like scary, what, what's this? But setting my feet on that path and beginning to walk it, it just opened up, things opened up in a very, and I've been on a spiritual journey already to explore, but yeah. this was like going into a whole new level, a mm -hmm. realm, an opening. It was- Yeah. Well, how, what, when was the timeline for that uh, first uh, connection with that? What was that? That came in for me in the early nineties. I was at that pivotal point in a woman's life, maybe in anybody's life. I'd just gone into my fifties. Mm -hmm. And a lot of other things in my life have been kind of finished up. 
And now it's like, oh, what's the next 50 years going to be? Yeah. And it offers that opportunity sometimes if you are in a good enough position, you're blessed with stability of whatever to begin to explore deeper. Yes. Labyrinth yeah. certainly did that. And beyond that, and maybe we'll show those in a little bit here now. Yeah. Because Labyrinth, and I know the next set of our classes you've mentioned coming up for the next apprenticeship I'm in, yes. there'll be more on the spiral. Yes. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely the plan with the uh, the coming up is to work with the different spirals, teach you all how to draw a variety of different spirals, combining them in different different types of patterns and exploring different ways to construct them. So, yeah, um, it sounds like though within your work, you know, besides just working with uh, thinking about drawing or the iconography, like getting your feet on the ground and connecting with the earth itself, right? And putting yourself into that journey of the spiral has kind of had that uh, body resonance with you, right. you know, because sacred geometry, you know, and especially the way that we're doing it online like this, let's say there's no in-person contact through the apprenticeship, it could get cerebral, you know, it could be about you know, yes. the, the connections, you can kind of disconnect from the, uh, the, the journey that's taking you through your own life. And, you know, the labyrinth, as you're describing it, you know, I've built medicine wheels or stone circles, you know, fire, fire, um, uh, sacred sites around fire, you know, pits and things like that. And that really getting your hands on the earth and connecting in that way is just an essential part that's gets beyond the words like the drawings do themselves. But in another way, it really gets you in the elements, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. Yes, yes. Connecting with the elements. It's certainly one. I'm going to jigger out a little bit of the share screen to yeah, show briefly this. Oh, I'm going down the wrong way. So appreciate the patience of your viewers as we uh, um, go back to this. Let's see. Okay. Hmm. Oh my goodness. Did it jump right at the photo? We're well, on the labyrinth one. Yeah, because that's the one you had open. Okay, from. very good. So uh, <laughs> if people, yes, and I want to hold on to what you were saying about the connection with the earth, but for anybody who um, is wondering a little bit more labyrinth, this and this would probably make a beautiful screenshot, which is actually how I captured this. Mm -hmm. This does show all the way down to the bottom, maybe my cursor will show it, the literal spiral, yeah. which is its own. The, the idea of a labyrinth is a winding path to more or less a center point. And some incorporate a more sacred geometry aspect. And certainly this one here is uh, the Chartres Labyrinth from Chartres Cathedral. Mm -hmm. And in the middle, there's that beautiful flower of life. Mm -hmm. So it's um, uh, certainly one that if people have known about them, they might have even walked one of these. Mm -hmm. um, going kind of counterclockwise up to the top, this is one of the most ancient forms. And this is the one that can be done uh, on my website, which people might want to visit at the Labyrinth page, you'll see one that I walked in the snow uh, around solstice of a number of years ago, just knowing which way the paths curved in. Yeah. So it's really very ancient. Um, and then the one to the left might be familiar to some, and it's um, found in the southwest of the U.S. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm... It, it has quote unquote a name. I'm not sure. It's not going to come to me right this moment. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. But um, I thought this was a great image to bring them together. And then the next one, and we'll see if this lets me do it. I want to show you where the next part of the journey, because this is really what brought me to your work. Yeah. And that is the, I'll start with this one and go back to where I found it. Uh, yeah. uh, or where it, where it found me. Because I think that's what happens. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to mention that's a little small. Maybe you can zoom yeah. in. Yeah. But yeah, I imagine in a moment you'll get into sharing a little bit more because I feel like it sounds like you visited some of these places. I sure. Well, I did for wow. both labyrinth and and this this very decorative one. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, I believe it, it'd be interesting if. And uh, well, I won't be mysterious. You're, you're seeing this now, but let me get to where I encountered it because yeah. I was off on a pilgrimage. And again, I, it was a year that was very pivotal in my life. I, I was just into my 50s. Mm -hmm. And this beautiful, you'll see it here. This is in Glastonbury, England, uh, the county, as they call it, of Somerset. 
It is in the relative area of Stonehenge, mm -hmm. Avebury, those incredible circles mm -hmm. that, you know, megaliths and the geometry of it. And I don't know, George, if you want to take a minute to say anything you have yourself possibly encountered about those like stone circles. I'd be curious to know more. Uh, I believe, you know, the most I've, I've never traveled to any of those sites. I would love to, um, you know, especially as my interest in sacred geometry is definitely not as long as yours. <laughs> and with the uh, restrictions on travel is over the past few years, Sarah has made that difficult as my interest has really peaked. Um, but I'd say the probably the most, uh, most I've read on it, you know, because it's mostly in a lot of sacred geometry books I have that do connect it to the sacred sites is... Uh, John, John Michel's work. Uh, yes, his very work much. has so much in there uh, of connecting the megalithic structures and connections of lines of energy between the different sites through the ley lines and all that. So, you know, that's, uh, that is really a strong connection to the geomancy, the connection of the sacred geometry, you know, earth measure, you know, how this was really done by the ancients. And, uh, yeah, I have a real fascination with that. Um, so yeah, that's that's about the extent I have of the, uh, <laughs> the hands-on through an armchair perspective. <laughs> well, it, it calls you. I mean, I, I think sacred geometry in and of itself calls you, uh, mm -hmm. whatever that is. It's an ineffable. Uh, there's, I keep trying to describe it. And I have been to this, it's a holy well. That's what the, the, uh, the uh, grid work covers here. And I'll get back to that in a minute, but I want to again do a little uh, remembering of during our class when you did uh and i it's it, there was so much rich material in the eight weeks uh and what was wonderful for a person who had never done much in the sense of using a compass and a ruler and doing it on paper and feeling a little bit you were always so encouraging of uh, take your own pace so it's good because i still confuse dodecahedron and icosahedron even which they refer to uh -huh, yeah the one where we talked about the earth grid yes. was absolutely fascinating. And I know people who come to this video and are hearing about this maybe at all for the first time can look back on your YouTube channel and find a particular video or two yes. with that information. So, well, I, have seven, I checked today before you go, I have 75 videos up now, I decided to count. That's a lot of content and it's only really been within the past year and a half or so that I put all that out there. So it's a lot for people to weed through, um, but there is a whole playlist on the Earth Grid yeah. so people could check that out. Yes, playlists are very important. And I mentioned we were talking before we started recording, I ventured into making videos myself for my own reasons and people will find it link of the earth related. Absolutely. Yeah. We'll, we'll kind of jog back over to the picture and I want to take us to the next step of why mm -hmm. I come towards um, knowing I wanted to learn the language of your, of, of sacred geometry and new geometry. And it was so exciting to find it. Yes. That as I came for the first time, and I think it's very important kind of to know, and I've written a book, a spiritual memoir, which talks about this. So and it's on my website. I'm not trying to market my book here, but <laughs> it was August of 2001. 9-11 was a few weeks in the future. Uh -huh. And I've been on call pilgrimage to come here. I still couldn't believe the morning we came up jet lagged for the flight, the night flight. We've gone to Stonehenge. Don't go to Stonehenge when you're jet lagged. It takes you quickly into other realms and you might get lost. <laughs> <laughs> it was quite extraordinary. The next morning, I'm so excited because I know I'm going to see this holy well. And I know that on the cover of it is this sacred. Well, I didn't even understand what it was. I just knew it was tell it was it was telegraphing something. Mm. And What's wonderful about if you're not, you shouldn't pressure yourself when something calls and now suddenly you're there, don't try to figure it out here. Mm -hmm. Figure it out through your heart. Mm. Or no, you let it come into your heart. You try not to figure it out right away. Yeah. So this had already haunted me by my seeing it in a print form in a book. And it, it was, well, my spiritual memoir gives the whole of the journey. Yeah. Knowing and learning more 
through the work I've done with you. And that seems a perfect time to go to one of the class drawings. Sure. I was very pleased about, I'm gonna see, I gotta go back around here. I think, uh, is it disappeared on me already? I hope not. Well, I, I, have this I see your slides there. They're all oh, six around one. This is it. Yes. And I don't remember if this came up. I remember showing it to the group. And okay, here we go. Mm -hmm. so, you know, going forward with, and it's, you know, influenced me so long. It's a little fuzzy. Mm -hmm. But the two things that strike me already as our conversation has evolved, is evolving. It's a lovely organic spiraling or whatever it's doing, <laughs> blossoming. Yeah. Is my knowing and and try to uh, bring in more of my, I, I love working with colors and just kind of throwing them around. Mm -hmm. But I remember as I was coloring the six around one, mm -hmm. that I felt the organicness of it. Mm. So you're absolutely right in that so much work with labyrinths and all of that and earth energies and earth healing work is very grounded in me. But mm -hmm. this is, there's another realm mm. that that you help us explore, which is, and I keep coming up with this, help me if you or react to it. This is its own language. Mm -hmm. And it's an, I feel it's an ancient language that's returning for us to understand and utilize. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I mean, I think that's sums up a lot of why I'm putting uh hours each week into producing these videos and sharing as much as I can with all the apprentices. And, and I guess, you know, when I was in getting into sacred geometry, I couldn't really find sources that really kind of walk me through step by steps of kind of how to do it. I mean, so we, we've got this imagery around us or it was so basic, that's where it kind of left you at, you know, it was like, or it was almost implied you knew how to do, you could just do it by looking at the picture, which you can, <laughs> um, you know, it, it, it is there. Um, so I, I think that, you know, really starting to work with it kind of, you know, because before I was doing sacred geometry, I spent 20 years in the woods. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, I remember hearing about that. You know, doing all the tracking and doing all the exploration and bringing people out, looking at natural patterns, you know, working with stones and fire and, you know, doing all that sort of stuff. And that built the kind of, uh, the intuitiveness around it, right? Because it, that grew inside me, just like you walking the labyrinth, even though you didn't really, and I didn't know how to draw any of this material, you gravitate to it because you see the natural patterns in natural settings and it's in your body. So all of a sudden, now you're kind of almost getting kind of a peel back of the layers, you know, from other planes, other levels of uh, dimensions, which yes. kind of in this, pure sacred geometric form with the fire ratio and everything's like really, you know, more organized in a way, <laughs> you know, than it is in the natural patterns. But then all of a sudden you could see that more of that organization, even in the natural patterns, which is highly organized, but can look chaotic. <laughs> so some of these drawings exhibit that as well. So it's a really, you know, without that kind of natural connection, just being totally mentally focused on this, you're going to miss the boat. So you can go from either either end of the spectrum. You know, you can enter from like a purely, I got this in my body. Now I can under, understand that, or I got the mental understanding and can kind of go to the nature. And you got to find that harmony between those two polarities. You know, those two poles. Yes, 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 yes. It's 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 been an unbalancing time. Mm -hmm. uh, for all of us, here we are in 2022, Friday the 13th of May, <laughs> get back in. Um, and it's been very so unbalancing. Um, I am a firm believer that, and it's partly, I've, I've had the wonderful opportunities to work with some wonderful spiritual teachers. Uh, Jean Houston is one. I, I always feel a good a shout out to her in her mystery school and more. She, she's incredible mm -hmm. in her work. Actually, she has her own quite amazing labyrinth connection and all. I, you know, a hunter said on his video, Hunter Hughes, who you interviewed from our group as well, and just a couple days ago. And I, I strongly encourage people to look at and watch and hear his video too. He talked about for himself and his journey, the synchronicities that he that are that are like like 
a big light on the, yeah, you're going in the right place. You found your way to the right place. That um, um, this, and I lost my train of thought already, but it was had to be about being connected. So I'll just go with that. <laughs> See if it comes back. Mm -hmm. um, and the, the unbalancing and the rebalancing, yes. That's part of what we were about in our conversation. Oh, no, there it is. I got it. I, I'm so happy when there was, I'll, I'll go right to it before it leaves again. Yeah. There is a person, I'm a great believer in that we have lived many lives. Uh -huh. So here I am, boom, in this one. Um, I, my book reveals how it is I got to really understand that. And actually, when I went to Glastonbury the first time, the other remarkable thing, I guess a little self-promotion for the book, but it explains my journey. Uh -huh. uh, we were working with deep creativity. We were writers accessing deeper aspects of our creativity. And in one of our exercises of visualization, I met the most amazing woman who was to be a character in something I wrote, only it turned out to be I had encountered in the, as you can in meditation, going into more of a shamanic journey, I had met my prior person self. Mm. And she had met me. So I was, in a sense, linear wise, her future, she was my past. And it mm. rocked my world, George, I'll tell you. So how do you dig? How do you dig? But it goes to the point why is it I'm being given these gifts in this lifetime? Why is it? But we're all here to help this world continue her evolution. Mm -hmm. We all have brought a gift. Here's my teaching. I've done workshops around this, so I'm doing a little bit of that workshop stuff with you. And you <laughs> but everybody has brought beautiful gifts with them. I think the first thing is to enjoy this life. That is huge. If you're at a place and find a way to do this, please en enhance that in every way you can. Mm -hmm. But there's a gift we brought, maybe more than one. What is it we're to share? And listening to Hunter talking in his video, mm. he's found what he, I think, has to share. Mm -hmm. And I was looking, and because I've been a teacher, I'm probably a teacher in another lifetime, I continue to find things. Why am I here? What am I to do? It's not to take up space and add more plastic to the environment. That I'm pretty sure of. <laughs> <laughs> um, coming to new geometry has given me another portal to enter and know more. Of course, I wanted to just bring up the slide quick because how beautiful are these spirals? Oh yeah, I love that. You know, I, I, I just am reflecting on what you're saying too because I can get lost in the spirals that you yeah. directed my attention to, <laughs> but I was just taking in everything you, uh, you just shared. Um, I, I think that, uh, I just want to connect that to the sacred geometry and finding some gift, you know? Um, now it might come to everybody different along their path, but I really feel like that these sacred geometric forms or patterns or designs that are really scattered around. I mean, most people might not pay attention to them much, but they are little calling cards, you know, that some oh. point you will, you know, look at it and it will say something to you in a way that you hadn't quite experienced yet. And I will send you on this little journey a little bit more. And in that journey, you will start to discover more of your uh, true essence, your true purpose. You know, you might find something that you really gravitate and catch, catches your interest. And you, you might start to, uh, you know, put the pieces together, you know, from a multidimensional perspective of like what it is your gifts are and what it is you're meant to be sharing. And, and I think that sacred geometry really captures that in the patterns and designs that are really all around us. And it's just a matter of time before it does spark that ignition. And, and we talked a lot about that in Hunter's video. Yes. And, and I think that, you know, there's something in it for everybody, I imagine. And, and uh, so, you know, the more imagery that's out there, the more opportunities people have to kind of have that spark of interest. And, it, and it, there's no one particular view or angle. It, you don't know what's going to be for any one person. So you you put out as many possibilities, you know, as possible, and they might resonate or not. Yeah, and there's, there's, of course, I brought up, here's a screenshot from some class I had of the last couple of months. And for me, it was learning about more about these, these geometric building blocks, mm -hmm. and all of that. So I just wanted to, you know, give you a, a little uh, uh, um, thumbs up for introducing me to more of this. 
and yep. back to that whole idea of um uh and i'll go back to this one because i was really i've got a few uh drawings in here from our class that i will uh, uh just want to uh toot my own horn a little bit about and also your teaching but uh, there's a term and i don't know if you're familiar with this but in a workshop i took on it was um a beautiful artist uh workshop it was on making collage art mm -hmm. which is its own wonderful study of sorts and the gentleman who taught it uh jonathan talbot uh give him a little shout out he um talked about something when he was a young man uh finding his way in his early life in europe and he lived for a time with uh, the gypsies back he's um this would have been well you know some time ago there's still certainly wonderful gypsy communities here and there but especially in the more uh in times where gypsies did much more traveling here and there I'm trying to yep. get this uh, picture to open let's see um they would leave signs for one another called a patron p-a-t-r-i-n hmm. a patron and as you're describing what you are about putting things out there for people to see to kind of just whatever it is it's, it's a, a, a sign of something that that catches their eye and they want to explore it more mm -hmm. More. So, um, and the other word that I often think of is the people who offer this kind of thing, you being one, you are a way shower. You are, you're not trying to be didactic and teach like that. You're simply showing a way for people to, in essence, it's always opening up more of yourself. Mm -hmm. um, yes, yeah. yeah, I totally agree with that. Thanks for uh, reflecting on that and there's so much more that we can add to that for sure was there something particular about this image that you're calling up um, that, that a slight little uh, a progress on certain of the things we did in class yeah and yeah. this what what but there is something very important here and let me enlarge it because as i would each week you know um and i mostly kept up with the drawings we went along and you were you would yeah. always say you know stop me if i'm going too fast and you know occasionally that would be the case yeah what became the most fascinating for me in the geometry, one of the particular things, and all of it is fascinating for me, is of course you see that we started again from the six around one in the Vesica Pisces, just all in the background. I'm gesturing to my, but then things grow out of it. So I like that the circles, I never try to at least it yet, mm -hmm. trace them because I did add more to this. So I'll, I'll show you the final art part of it. Sure, sure. Let's see it something about beneath that so you begin to get more than just the two dimensionality it begins to grow yeah 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 recently i posted a thing on facebook of two images two days back to back and one yeah. i didn't leave the lines on the back you know the circle and it was just colorful and then i put the next day all the circle pattern that's behind and i asked people hey which of these do you really yeah. like you know more which one and and most people gravitated they like them both but they many people really like seeing the template that ex they came from rather yeah. than seeing the form itself right yeah so i really like what you're doing here with highlighting the circles and finding the patterns and the colors all within those yeah, yeah. it's it's a lot of fun it's very meditative and mm -hmm. uh, certainly people one of them I don't know when it exactly started, but coloring books with mandalas and that kind of thing have, have been quite popular, I guess maybe for a while, but there's something wonderfully meditative and heaven knows for two years of the quarantines, the lockdowns, we had more time to do coloring. So. Yeah. Oh, that came out beautiful. I mean, I think yeah. the, way you've, uh, the five circles of the two different colors on the outside there really gives you that sense that it does have some dimensionality to there, you know, and then it, it's coming coming off the page with the darker ones maybe behind and the lighter ones more closer or however you want to look at that. Yeah. But I'm definitely getting that sense that you're starting to capture some of that. Oh, yeah. And I was inspired. We had a lovely group in our, as um, of course, we mentioned Hunter, but I know one of our Jacqueline's who was cute to us. Yeah. Uh, she was very inspiring in her coloring work. But again, something you do so well. And again, teacher to teacher comment is that you're very um encouraging of each person not just at their own pace but you know just the idea of you know just you nudge in a gentle way to explore more and yeah. sacred geometry has so many fractal parts of it so many dimensionalities that you it, i don't know if it can be overwhelming for people i don't know if you hear that from mm -hmm. people 
if it feels overwhelming, but that I guess would be simply a personal reaction, maybe, I don't know. I think so, it really depends. I mean, some people really have, uh, you know, have a hard time with the maybe mathematics of it or just even working with the compass. You know, you have some of just the physical, like working with the tools, you know, you have just, there's too many facts or just too many rabbit holes to go down, too much information, it starts to take over, you know. Um, yeah. No one can really know all of it. I mean, I don't know all of it. You know, I just am following a bunch of trails. And I think I, it's like a follow your bliss type thing, really. You know, the famous Joseph Campbell quote. It's like, if you're following your bliss with this sacred geometry subject, then you don't have to try and retain what it is you know. Like, that's the thing that, you know, is easy trap to fall into is like, I got to know all this information. I'm a teacher, so I've got to remember all the little facts about it. But then you get, you know, I, I've experienced this in teaching other things like wildlife tracking, you get stuck in the labels and the categories and then you lose wow. bliss and enjoyment of it. <laughs> and the enjoyment of it is how you move with the journey of it, you know, following the labyrinth path, let's just say. And then you teach from that ex excitement and enthusiasm and then you'll recall what's necessary at the moment you need it rather than having to memorize a bunch of stuff that is not needed. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, it's been funny the last couple of days is I knew we would sit here and talk via Zoom, the magic of the web of the internet, the worldwide yeah. and everything, is I kept thinking, what if I say dodecahedron and I really mean a casahedron? It's like, yeah, it's like, forget <laughs> it. it's okay. <laughs> Just be present, to be present. We, we do, yeah. it's, we, we, we get caught up in the details. That's, that's the case. Well, I want to show my last little set. Please do in terms of this was our last class and I, there was something about this and the other thing you encouraged and um you know for again people who would just kind of find their way a little bit to some of your offerings here and um is that um the idea of just sitting and so this is what i did in class for our and how would you so this is not the nonagon as i recall it this is yeah. our not right yeah and, so tell people what it is they're seeing it and I'll give the next two sets of it that I the yeah. next iteration. Yeah, well, this was our eighth class and you know I was joking the week before I said, "Hey, we've done, you know, pentagons, we've done hexagon view, we've done the square view." So I said I'm going to come up with the drawing and it's going to combine all of them together and add the final this other element of doing the well there's 18 points. So we have a 18 point star such situation, the nonagon being 9. So with this one, what I was uh, aiming for was to combine, you know, from that golden circle seed of life, how we can get the Pentagon, how we can introduce the square view and, and do this squaring the circle, you know, the perimeter of the uh, square equal to the circumference of the circle, and then also add in, you know, hexagon star and the nine. So it was really all that kind of all at once uh, as a culminating drawing. I'd never done it before. I came up with it the night before. <laughs> Well, I, you know, whatever it is, and I know I said a time or two, what are the, um, what are the elemental energies kind of blessing this work? And I certainly thought of Ariadna, our grandmother spider, and uh, of course Metatron seems to be part of what you're up to too. Mm -hmm. So I, so I, I would in each class, like you see, because that would be my class up with, with all the little keys and uh, following the tracking of it. This, there is a tracking there. There really is a. <laughs> And so this was my next effort. And yeah. actually, I was starting to color it at this point uh, or seeing how much I wanted to. Yeah. But something grand about this in it's, if there's a lot of movement, I see it. Oh, so I guess the point I was making is you would encourage us to maybe during the week, just sit and look at what it is. Just uh, mm -hmm. it's like the mandala idea, maybe. Yeah. But uh, again, you know, looking at the circles. So I wanted to get something I didn't know I and I may do more. I mean, it'll see. But this is the last one I did. I don't think I've shown it yet. And my granddaughter, who arrived to be in my household for uh, part of the time now, came with a, her own wonderful markers, and she's quite a little artist. Yeah. Use all their great markers and such. So well, that's looking this great. Is the final one. I'm really happy with it. I want you to get bigger. Go away. There we go. I'm talking yeah. to you on the screen. So really? this this is my this. But I'm pretty happy with it. Mm-hmm. No, I think that looks fantastic. I, you know, it really is, uh, it, you're starting to 
to highlight the major features that I was trying to yeah. you know pull out there of the unity of all the the square the six pointed stars two of them in there and the five pointed star and you still have lightly that circle template and then you have that kind of nested container of the 18 points around it and the yeah. nine you really highlighted the nine in there too with the kind of golden yeah the gold the gold star there right yeah there's a lot of gold energy and the mm -hmm. other thing i wanted to do and it's a little bit of this and um you know i know i'll be doing this in the time at which we took our class very very uh, uh, movingly, I guess. I don't know what else to say, but the invasion of Ukraine yeah. uh, has happened in this month. And their symbols of the blue and gold, of the, the sky and the sunflower. So yeah. the blue and the gold, I wanted to continue to kind of bring that in to mm -hmm. what. So I, I just realized, other than the blue on the outside, is that I made that lovely little inner circle uh, its own blue and then the gold. So. But I, I love the idea of the movement of everything. And the more I do with this, the more I know about the movement. So oh, that's back great. to learning another language. Yeah, well, I got a quick question before yeah, you go ahead. About that. Um, yeah, and that's just beautiful how you made the connection kind of like an almost healing mandala for the earth, you know, for what's happening on earth with the, the, the Ukraine situation. Uh, so, I mean, you're infusing your consciousness into this drawing with that in mind, you know? So that's really beautiful and healing as it is. And now that's another side co comment uh, related. It's just, is when you, is this really your, how much sacred geometry did you draw before you took the apprenticeship? Because this is really a, not an easy drawing, you know? This is after eight weeks of being together, but you know, there's a lot of, go a lot going on here and, uh, you know, just like what's a before and after kind of like when you came in, were you drawing a lot of sacred geometry? I guess I didn't really know your background or were you mostly connecting with the uh, the imagery through seeing it around you and exploring the, the labyrinths and things like that and doing the walking? Well, I know in part and it's very intuitive and I'll just hold up his book that I work with water. Yeah. And here is Dr. Masaru Emoto's book. Yeah. And some of the work I've done, of course, you know, if you know that Masri Moto, you might know how it is that he came to find the structure within water mm -hmm. and these beautiful, um, I guess they're six for the most part, but nonetheless. Mm -hmm. So, so much of what I had was really intuitive. Um, the, the labyrinth, which is the Chartres one with its sacred geometries and all of that, that's been a part of programs where I've gotten to walk it. Um, you know, I, I know we talked off and on a little bit about what was happening in us or maybe a little bit for us or backgrounds, but there's, I, I kept, I, I was exploring in my own kind of reflections what it was about labyrinth and what its crossover was with sacred geometry. And to my mind, it's like it's an embodiment of mm -hmm. some of what you're teaching because you're literally within it. Mm -hmm. And not only does it bring a great pleasure and ecstasy or passion or uh, whatever that is following your bliss but it's it is um it's bringing into your body you know we can do a lot with our head and we can do a lot outside of ourselves mm -hmm. but it's that ultimate learning of knowing oneself more that's mm -hmm. i think the best possible outcome for anything you engage in where you're trying to learn mm -hmm. um i'm not quite sure where my Thank well, yeah, I, guess, I, I, I mean, I guess you applied all that uh, yes. embodiment to your drawings because, yeah. you know, yeah. you, you probably weren't drawing things like this to this level yeah. degree or uh, of, uh, you know, uh, technical, technical uh, components that I was sharing here. But because you had that embodiment, you're able to do it, really, I guess, because it didn't become overwhelming. You kind of went at your own pace. You know, I there was no pressure for me to produce anything and you just kind of did your own thing and made you know your own beautiful artwork with some really different techniques and you know producing things like that so it's really it's really encouraging for me to see all Good. the as you produce all this beautiful work in just a short amount of time yeah yeah and yeah and it's very true i know that as a person who is here i'm, I'm not to just take up space for 70, 80 years, but to make a difference in the world. Um, 
Mm -hmm. whatever that is. I know some people are more compelled by that than others. And I was a teacher. That's a compulsion. You never go in it for the money. That's what I can tell you. And of course, in our wonderful group, we have our fabulous Doreen who worked her teaching around our class. Shout out to Doreen. I, I just can't say praise enough for teachers. But um, the it goes back to my knowing, having taken that first five weeks to row, that yeah. you were um that was precisely going to be your approach a person who had never done it it took me a while to master the compass twirl yeah. Yeah. <laughs> go forward and then it it like the earlier thing about the best of the Pisces for myself at the labyrinth it just wouldn't let me go once I responded and I knew it was leading me where I needed to go mm -hmm. and uh, I I live a pretty amazing blessed life like everybody, I've had dark and light. You can't have a life and be present to it mm -hmm. without it. But mm -hmm. uh, more and more and more, and I know this was said a little bit at the beginning by some of the, you know, some of us getting to know each other. We felt the opportunity to do this had come along purposefully. We had, it had found us, we had found it. Mm -hmm. So, but going forward and your ability to let people take their pace and find their own way with it uh yeah i got really proud of being able to do these as you can see in the last one yeah so, uh, depending on where we are with the time i'm going to bring this up as the last slide to share i think you're going to really like this this came to me yesterday uh -huh. and it's a quote i have on my website uh ralph waldo emerson mm. so uh i'll unless there was another one you saw you wanted me to look at but he said this that our life is an apprenticeship to the truth that around every circle another can be drawn that there is no end in nature but every end is a beginning and under every deep a lower deep opens mm. that's perfect yeah. Isn't it? <laughs> yeah that's really really great especially since so much of my apprenticeship was talking about putting that phi circle in the middle of the uh the <laughs> other circle the whole time pretty much <laughs> <laughs> that was what the apprenticeship was usually really about and get <laughs> yeah, absolutely well, i'll stop screen sharing i think i've showed off enough of what i've done but you can tell and i hope people can realize or feel what joy it's been it it never was frustrating which was kind of i wasn't sure how that would go but i never felt frustrated for myself no, that's great. And that's, of course, just a small snapshot because you, you did quite a few more other images and, you know, you tried to just pull a few other things from the whole experience. And of course, you've got probably hundreds of images of all the other interesting things you've been up through through the year. So I think you really did give us a nice overview of the journey and how it led to the apprenticeship. And, uh, you know, I think with the apprenticeship, I really feel like, you know, we, everybody comes together for that uh, specific uh, time, whatever the calling was. And however long you know people are meant to be there well that's how long they're meant to be there and then they take what it is that they've gathered from that and they keep weaving it into their their journey right so you know um i never expect anybody's going to keep going i'm always thankful when when someone like yourself is going to continue on because that just means there's more to weave into that that fabric so um yeah so i let's see i think that uh Unless you have anything else to say, Carol, I think we did such a nice job with the slides as a backdrop there. Yes, I'm glad we, we didn't. Uh, yeah, and I, you know, given it's been pretty incredible. I mean, you're talking to a person who, uh, in the 1950s, when I was a little kid, we were the last people on our rural road up in central New York to get a television. And now here I am, at, at, you know, at this decade of my life, my 70th decade or whatever they call the number, I don't know. It's, you never, by the way, secret uh, to let out, you you are always the same age forever inside. So it's just really, and that's a surprise year after year. But um, anyway, to think I've grown up through all of this time to what is now in some ways a little too techno heavy. I, I as a teacher who it gets kind of like, or a person like you who loves nature, does it occasionally drive you a little crazy? People are into their phones and screens instead of out where they need to be. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> well, it's definitely given us a tool to be able to do some of these yes. amazing things that we wouldn't be able to do otherwise. And, you know, the, 
for instance, I'm teaching with the drawings on the iPad and doing all those drawings that, you know, I really feel like I'm probably doing a lot of discoveries that maybe that they didn't even do in the old, in the old days when they went, because they didn't have the precision that I'm working with, with the iPad and I'm just being creative with it. And uh, so then I'm actually to be able to go back and look at a lot of sacred geometry designs and kind of add new ways of looking at it because of just the speed and the ability to kind of check things out. So I think it's kind of a nice, we're finding a real nice balance, I think, between blending things, things together and always try to make it backwards compatible, let's just say, to the actual drawing of it, right? So you don't just get lost. Like you can only do this if you have some sweet, sophisticated technology. <laughs> but if you're able to go back and be like, hey, this technology is going to make my life more uh, integrated, see more wholeness and connection and patterns and be able to do the drawings and get into that meditative state, well, then you're using that tool to help make a more enriching life. And that's really the purpose of technology, you know, is not to become a servant to it, <laughs> but yes. to let it serve us in a way. Yeah. yeah. And I think, well, someone mentioned it's something I read recently, because I do sometimes uh, get real beyond annoyed by the invasion of it mm -hmm. in, into our blah, blah, blah. But we're, it's literally refining the balance of, mm -hmm. you know, using it for purposes such as you, all that you've just described. You know, this amazing interaction, uh, you know, across several hundred miles, my house to your house, and then ultimately posted online for people to see from all parts of the world mm -hmm. and to make use of this. And the, you go back to one thing I always feel it's magic, there's magicalness. And there's a wonderful, uh, I think she's part of the 13 grandmothers, Grandmother Flora de Mayo. Uh, that we exist in the great, the mystery, uh, that that's what the spirit is. We, it's magical because we exist as part of the great mystery. Mm -hmm. And I think sacred geometry labyrinth, all of that gives us the ability to know more about an important part of our lives, the other realms mm -hmm. that are with us constantly, but we don't necessarily have an awareness of or a way to access them. But I believe that's what sacred geometry helps us to do. That feels like a final point on my end. Oh, no, I think that's a great point. I don't want to even say anything to try and wrap it up for us because I think you did such a nice job. I do want to just give you a moment just to share once again, just where people could find more about you, more on your book, anything you want to add. We did talk enough about My Sacred Geometry Apprenticeship that people know that that is happening. Of course, there'll be a link in the description. The next one starts June 6th. If you're seeing this many years from now, I've been plan planning on doing it many years from now. Right. So just keep checking that link. There will probably be new uh, dates posted on there. So anyway, uh, but Carol, please yeah. uh, share a little more on your side. Yeah, and I probably will be a link in the notes. Um, it's three words all together, golden spiral journey dot com. And of course, there it is. There's a reason why I chose that image. Talked about the spiral as one of life, but golden spiral, and it's been a journey. So goldenspiraljourney.com. Uh, it's more or less up to date, but there's a way to contact me through that as well. But I, I appreciate very much. I, I knew I'd enjoy our conversation. We, you know, we do bits and pieces through the classes, but this has been really fun. Uh, uh, I thank you so much, George, for inviting me to be a part of this aspect of your uh, YouTube channel. Thank you. Oh, yeah, thanks. So it's just been really thrilling to have you here. And, uh, you know, I had, think even when I met you first back in row, I already had the sense we'd be doing one of these conversations. <laughs> there you go. Just in passion for this. Um, so thanks for sharing that with all my viewers. And uh, just another thing for the viewers, uh, I do have a Facebook uh, group. So check that out, the New Geometers group. And uh, that's the, the Patreon site, which I also have, which has lessons and things like that to also check out. So there's a lot of options for people at different levels of per participation. Um, and just subscribe to my channel if you like the content. I'll continue to do the new conversations. I love having the apprentices on there because, you know, this is just real conversation with real people, with, you know, that are just into sacred geometry. So it's really exciting. I'll be doing more of those as well. Absolutely. So I think that's about it, Carol. We can say goodbye to everybody. And thanks, everybody, for watching. Peace and love. And we'll talk to you all later. Bye-bye.